Let's get right into it. You think you like being alone? Sure, being alone sounds peaceful. No one judging you for eating cereal in the shower. No awkward small talk. Just you, your thoughts, and unlimited freedom to live in your own strange little ecosystem. But here's the disturbing truth. Your brain hates being truly alone, like biologically, on a deep lizard brain level. It's not just a personality quirk, it's a full-on survival trigger. Evolution didn't design humans to thrive in solitude, it designed us to panic when we're isolated too long. And the results? Creepy. Let's count them down. Number one, time starts breaking. Spend long enough alone and your sense of time turns into soup. Days blur together, hours stretch or vanish. Without regular interaction, your brain loses external anchors to measure time. This is why prisoners in solitary confinement report weeks feeling like years or like a dream they forgot how to wake up from. Even astronauts and Arctic researchers have experienced this. You start to misjudge the time of day. Meals feel random. You might think a minute passed, but it's been four hours. It's like your brain loses its internal clock batteries and just starts guessing badly. Number two. Your voice gets weird. If you go long enough without talking to another human, your voice changes, and not in a cool movie montage kind of way. Your vocal cords weaken, your tone gets raspier, you might even slur words or forget how to phrase basic thoughts out loud. It's like your brain silently goes, oh, we're done speaking forever, cool, let me just toss all that language muscle memory into the trash. Which means when you finally do speak, you sound like a drunk wizard waking up from a hundred year nap. Number three, you start talking to everything humans crave dialogue. If we don't get it, we improvise. You start talking to the fridge, to your socks, to that one dead plant you keep forgetting to water. And yes, you might even name it. But here's the twist. Your brain doesn't fully know it's pretending. It releases dopamine and oxytocin, the same bonding chemicals you'd get from an actual conversation. Basically, your brain lies to you to protect you from the horror of your own silence. Number four, mirror you becomes real. You spend enough time alone and your reflection starts to feel like a second person. This isn't just a joke. Psychologists call it mirror self mice identification. It happens when the brain desperate for social contact starts misattributing your own reflection as someone else. You might glance at the mirror and feel slightly off, like you're being watched by you. Creepy? Absolutely. Common? More than you think? Number five, you hear voices that aren't there. Auditory hallucinations are one of the most reported effects of prolonged isolation. You'll hear someone call your name, or the sound of footsteps, or even full conversations happening in the next room. Your brain, desperate to simulate social input, just invents it. It's like your mind turns into a haunted house that it built itself for company. Number six, touch becomes a drug. How? Hold on. When you haven't had physical contact for a long time, your brain becomes touch deprived. The scientific term is skin hunger. People report craving even the brush of wind or the weight of a blanket. Some people even start hugging pillows just to trigger oxytocin. Basically, your nervous system throws a tantrum in your honor. Number seven, sleep stops. Working right with no social cues, your sleep cycle collapses. You stay up for 40 hours. You sleep for 20. Your dreams get intense and sometimes terrifying. Why? Because dreams are your brain's attempt to keep you mentally stimulated when reality gets too quiet. Long-term isolation can even trigger temporary insomnia, night terrors, or lucid dreams you can't wake up from. That's not rest. That's a psychological escape room. Number eight, memory loss. Solitude doesn't just mess with time, it messes with memory. You forget what you did yesterday. You misplace items constantly. Without outside interaction to reinforce events, your brain struggles to decide what matters enough to store, so you lose it. Literally. Number nine, you get stuck in loops. People in isolation often create repetitive rituals. Same meal, same seat, 
same order of movements. It gives the brain structure, but too much repetition turns into obsession. You're not just making tea, you're making the exact same cup three times a day with the same steps or else the day feels wrong. Number 10, you stop recognizing yourself. Prolonged isolation can lead to depersonalization. You'll catch yourself in the mirror and feel like a stranger. Your voice sounds foreign. Your thoughts seem like they belong to someone else. It's your brain saying, hey, this identity thing isn't getting any social feedback. So uh, should I delete it? Number 11, paranoia creeps. You never feel like someone's watching you when you're alone. Now imagine that multiplied by 1,000. In extreme solitude, your brain starts inventing threats. You might double check locks obsessively, become afraid of shadows, or start seeing movement in the corners of your eyes. You don't trust your senses because you're the only one confirming them. Number 12, you become too comfortable. Here's the twist. After enough time alone, you adapt too well. Socializing starts to feel terrifying. <laughs> Bitch, I see what you did there. I know. The world feels too fast, too loud, too messy. And re-entering society feels like waking up from a long dream where the only person who understood you was you. Number 13, reality feels optional. Without other people to validate your experiences, you might start doubting what's real. You'll question your memories. You'll replay conversations that never happened. The line between imagination and perception gets blurry. Eventually, you might even prefer the version of reality in your head. Final thought, alone, but not alone. Being alone for a while isn't dangerous. In fact, it can be healing. But being alone too long, your mind is a survival machine. I just got, and if it senses something is wrong, it starts rewriting the world to protect you. Even if that means talking to mirrors, fearing shadows, or believing the fridge has a personality. So if you've been alone for a while, check in with someone real, even if it's awkward, even if you don't want to, because sometimes survival looks like picking up the phone and saying, hey, a weird question, but how long has it been Tuesday? If that's all for today. If your fridge ever talks back to you, tell it to subscribe. Or better yet, you subscribe. I'll be making more videos like this soon. And hey, if you ever feel weird for talking to yourself, don't worry. Your brain started the conversation.